So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. Um, I grew up in the Eastern Panhandle my entire life. So I grew up in Jefferson County, Charlestown to be exact. And uh, it it did have a lot to do with shaping me into who I was, you know, this kind of small town feel. And I uh, grew up with you know, values of a small town girl and uh, loving where I was from and having a lot of pride in where I was from. And um, being in the Eastern Panhandle, from the Eastern Panhandle and traveling throughout was always just natural to me. So it's definitely broadened my horizons to be able to travel the whole state and see different parts of the state this year. So um, I love my home now. Now I recently live in Martinsburg and um, it is wonderful. I'm super close to everything. It shaves off a good 25 minutes of my travels and I'm really loving it here and uh, venturing out more into Berkeley County. So uh, while Jefferson County has always been my home, now Berkeley County is too. So it's nice to have both perspective. How long have you been competing in the Miss America organization? Oh, that's a that's one I have to think about. I guess we would be near seven years now and you would probably know best. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you hold any other titles before Miss West Virginia? I held um, some local titles. Before you go to Miss West Virginia, you compete as a local title holder, and that qualifies you to compete at Miss West Virginia. I've been, well, I've competed as a teen, so I've been Miss Jefferson County's teen, Miss Shenandoah's outstanding teen. I've been Miss Jefferson County actually twice, and I've been Miss Central West Virginia. You can do that as long as it's not back-to-back -back years. So, so people are like, huh? Yeah. But, um... So I've been pretty fortunate and I've been at the state level I guess a total of five times and I just call it luck. Why did you want to be Miss West Virginia? What motivated you to pursue this goal? Well a lot of it had to do with being a monarch miss and I remember when I was a monarch I was surrounded by the women who competed and I learned a little bit more what what they actually did, that it wasn't just a pageant, that they didn't just, you know, put on a pretty dress and walk a stage, but they were actually dedicated to community service and scholarship. And I remember, too, being a monarch miss at the age of maybe 10 or 11, it was a really hard time for me because of, and I know we'll get to this later, being bullied, that it was really hard for me to love myself then. But I remember my mentor then helped me find love for myself and, you know, made me feel brave and she inspired me and I was like, you know what, I want to be a Miss West Virginia like her. So that's what started it all. Um, do you have any favorite stories you um, from your experiences in Miss West Virginia so far? Oh, there's tons. There are so many because the best stories come from the students that I meet. And I'm interacting with students, I like to say nearly daily, because if it's not um, in the classroom, then I have public pages where, you know, students can tweet at me, they can uh, tag me in their pictures that they took with me at their school appearances, and they are definitely the brightest part about being Miss West Virginia and the biggest part because we do take a 100 school tour, and it's very special to be able to interact with them. They've told me the funniest things, and I could go on and on about the funny things that the students have said to me, but most of all, they they make every part of the job worthwhile and special. How was your experience at Miss America? It was great. I think every little girl, you know, puts in their mind what Miss America is and they watch it on TV and they're like, wow, that's really amazing. And, you know, I want to be at Miss America. And um, I always had the idea, but when I got there, I realized it was way more than what I thought it was. It was an opportunity to meet a girl from every state in the nation and develop friendships and be able to relate with girls on a level that we know what it's like, you know, to be a state title holder. It can get busy and it's very rewarding, but ultimately we know what it's like to be a part of the Miss America organization. Uh, it's an organization that everybody knows. Miss America is a household name and it's something that's very special to to know that you got to be a part of that tradition. And we got to do a lot of fun things. A lot of fun things that I don't know that I would to, would have got to be a part of if I would, weren't Miss West Virginia. I mean, I got to do events in Atlantic City that were amazing, you know, visit the Steel Pier and uh, have this whole event planned out for just us. It, it truly made me feel special. And I would do it all again if I could. Um, what has been a valuable lesson you've learned while competing in pageants? I think confidence. I think any girl can contest, uh, attest to that, that confidence is a huge 
of asset that you gain from competing. Because you learn how to love yourself in a different way, not because you want to look a certain way, not because you have this dress that makes you feel good. It's that you're learning more about yourself all throughout the journey that, you know, I'm capable of so much more and I can strive for greater goals. It's a confidence from within rather than without. And I think it's very special. It's definitely given me a great boost and letting me know that I can make a difference. And how has your background had an impact on who you are and where you are today? Well, I come from a really large family and I have uh, four sisters and that shaped me because I learned a lot from my older sisters and they were always my role models. I have a 32 year old sister, 28, 30 and I'm 22 and my younger sister is 12 and I learn from my 12 year old sister each and every day. It's kind of like a uh, look back in time but they definitely shaped me into who I was. You know it could be chaotic at times. I'm sure you can imagine a house with five women can get a little crazy but um, they're my best friends and they have probably taught me the most about life. Um, so moving on to your platform, mm -hmm. what is your platform and can you tell us a little bit about it? Well it's titled uh, Bullies Beware. I have a line in my heart and that is inspired by courage. And uh, I often use the Wizard of Oz as an example for students because everybody knows about the Cowardly Lion and him finding his courage and he had it all along. And so that has been my tagline to describe, you know, how I found my courage. And that's what helped me overcome bullying is courage and confidence because it was a really long time. I was bullied for 10 years of my life, but the worst of it being in middle school. And so uh, in middle school, it was very hard. People bullied me because I was overweight, and I promise you they said anything and everything they could to make me feel terrible. And uh, it took a really long time to get over that. It made me depressed, it gave me anxiety, it made me have great fear, and I even had to be put on homebound in high school, my first semester of high school, to take a reprieve away from that, to be able to feel like I could enter the doors of my high school again. And. I like to also tell the students that I think our teachers, counselors, administrators, faculty, faculty and staff, they, they do a really amazing job, but my job this year, I feel like I want to help them supplement that by giving my personal story about how I was bullied and how I was really lucky and I overcame it with courage and confidence, but sometimes we need a helping hand. We need to let people know that it's okay to ask for help and be helped. What inspired you to focus on bullying as your key issue? probably being bullied. Um, it took me a long time to be able to talk about it because when I was being bullied, I never said anything to my parents, my friends. I didn't say that it hurt me, although my friends did see it happen. Um, I was too embarrassed to let anyone know what was going on. So uh, I used that as I slowly gained this confidence that I felt like I was re-entering the world as a blossoming person that, you know what, I can use this experience to potentially make a difference. So um, that's what really drove me. Um, what are you hoping to accomplish with your anti-bullying? Um, well, honestly, to be in as many schools as possible because I think the more people you can reach, the more uh, prone you are to make a difference. And so I have been to over 60 schools so far, and I have um, two and a half, three months left of my reign, so I'm going to use every bit of that to reach as many schools as possible, and I've been in nearly every part of the state, and I'd like to go back to each area again, because I feel like it's very necessary to be in schools one-on-one, -on -one, interacting with students and sharing a story. Uh, it's clear from your title and success that you were able to move beyond your experience of being bullied to where you are today. How did you move past the pain mentally and emotionally and accomplish your dreams? What kept you going or motivated to achieve these goals? Well, like I tell everybody, it was not an overnight process. And um, sometimes when I tell the story, it can seem that way, but it was hard. It was really hard. And it was long and a really dreary process because I think, you know, when we're young and when we are 12 years old, you know, even 15, 16, 18, and sometimes today, everybody has insecurities. Even as a 22 year old, I have insecurities all the time. And um, being 12, when all this was happening, they were far more insecurities than I had. And that was really hard to combat along with being bullied 
when people didn't think that I was worthy or I was pretty enough or I was gross or anything that they used to say that would make me feel so low and put me at a point so low that I, I would just feel terrible. And it was really long and I had to take it day by day and that reprieve away from high school for my first semester, it was hard. I didn't get to talk to a lot of my friends. I was out of school and not a lot of people interacted with me. And I didn't get to go to homecoming. I didn't get to join any clubs my first year. I missed out on a lot, but what helped me was taking that time to myself to realize, you know what? I am worthy no matter what I look like. I'm worthy no matter who I am or what people think of me, but it was day by day. And each day I felt like I was able to make a change and, you know, slowly build myself up. Like I ate healthier and um, I walked to the park with my mom, just really simple things. And uh, it was something that I had to learn. Like I was making these changes for me, not anybody else. Like never to change for a bully or, you know, change for anybody because I believe that we're all different for a reason and it's our gift to be different. And so I had to take that in stride. Very long process. Um, why do you think bullying is such a hot topic in our society right now? I think because it's so easy to do. Because on social media, especially in high school and middle school, all ages school, even elementary school, um, social media is a huge part of our life. And some of us don't like to admit it, but that's the first thing we look at when we wake up. You know, we look at our phone and, you know, see what's going on on Twitter or Instagram. And I'll be honest, I'm not very good at those. I really don't know how to use them too well. But um, I do know that it's a big part of everybody's life, even adults. And I think it's so easy to do now because back maybe 10 years ago, it it was bullying in school. It was bullying, you know, when you're at social events. Now it's moved on to you can be bullied at home in the comfort of your own home and people can say terrible things to make you feel awful about yourself. And it's so easy to get on a computer screen two seconds and say the worst things to people. And I think that it's important to, you know, bring awareness and education and personal stories to our youth today. And I think it's a hot topic. I think it's always been a hot topic, but now I think people are starting to realize that it hurts and it's way more than what meets the eye because something that I hear a lot is that people always say, you know what, bullying's just a part of growing up and can't, can't everybody just shake it off and get over it? No, because we weren't told in life that it was going to be something where uh, people are going to be unkind to you and you're just gonna have to get over it. When we enter this world, we're told that, you know, life is wonderful and people are wonderful and live it to the fullest. And so I just think that we have to remember that, too, that no one has to be unkind and we don't have to live like that. And it should not be a part of our daily lives. Why is letting students know about bullying so important? I think because it's very deep and it's something that students really don't want to talk about because... It's scary, and I know every thought process as a student, you know, when, when you're being bullied and if you tell somebody you're afraid that it happens worse, or if your friend is being bullied and you want to tell somebody, then they bully you, and, or it makes you look like an outcast. That's, those are completely real thoughts that we have, and I understand them, but that takes a lot of courage to be able to tell somebody, but being able to tell somebody or stand up for yourself, it can ultimately save a life. And that's something that we have to think about. And uh, also, I always think, put it in my mind, that I don't want to be responsible for saying something so unkind that makes somebody you know, hurt every day like me. I spent every day in my bedroom, locked myself in my bedroom because behind my four walls and my closed door, nobody could judge me. My iPod was my best friend. I listened to my music all the time and uh, it was something that made me feel safe and secure. So it was something that gave me my little safe haven. But I wanted my safe haven to be my world. And I think it's really necessary to tell students the realities of it because they may be going through it and when they know that somebody had been through it, maybe it'll make them want to open up and maybe it might start a chain reaction to make a big difference. Um, so some students here at Edgeville don't believe bullying is a big thing, so mm -hmm. what would you like to say to those people? Well, 
I hear, like I said, I hear that a lot. I hear that bullying's not a big deal all the time. But from someone who experienced it and from someone that suffered great depression and someone that truly didn't feel like they were worthy and they shouldn't be here, um, I'd like to tell them that it's real and that it hurts. And because growing up we hear sticks and stones may break my bones, words never hurt me. Words hurt, they last forever. I still remember those words. And um, luckily I've forgiven the bullies because without them, I wouldn't be where I am today trying to make a difference and trying to share the story, but it's real and it really hurts. And there's a lot of people that can attest to that, but it takes great courage to overcome that. And for the people who don't think it's real, I would take time to listen. I would take time to understand uh, how people can feel. And if those out there, you know, if some people are bullies, then I think that they need just as much love as a victim because there's something going on in life that, you know, makes people want to bully and want to hurt others. So maybe it's all about that we need an act of love. We need to send love to victims and to let them know that they are important. And we can't let anyone define us for who we are, but to the bullies, you know, extend out a reaching hand and say, you know what, come to lunch with me. Come hang out with me. Let's go to a movie because they might need a friend. And you have to look at it from every aspect. And I think that as we grow older, and we look back maybe into high school, we'll realize too, wow, the things I said maybe everybody laughed at and maybe everybody thought was hilarious. That person going home, that might have been the worst day of their life. And I would just ask the people who don't think it's real to consider, do you want your words to be the worst day of somebody's life? And it's a really, really complicated and widespread epidemic. How is bullying in high school different from bullying in the elementary and middle school level? Uh, I think it's just as bad at every level because there's different things to bully about and as we grow older there's different issues and sometimes we look at our elementary school students and we hear stories of you know mom dad or brother sister so and so said this to me today and it might seem ins insignificant to high schoolers or adults but that can be a really terrible day for them and they'll remember that for the rest of their lives. So at any age, it's really important to take time to consider that it does hurt, but um, I think it varies at different ages and I think a lot of it has to do with accessibility to social media because I know you guys know that in high school it's a really big part of life. And I think the more that we delve into social media, that the more extreme it can get because it is easy to, like I said, to hop on the computer and say something awful, which is terrible. But um, we see now that even elementary school students are very involved in social media. And that's not saying that social media is a terrible thing because it can be an awesome thing. I use social media to an advantage to, you know, say, you know, I'm gonna be at Hedgesville High School today talking about my platform or Hedgesville Middle. And, um, it's, it can be really awesome, but we just have to know how to say the right appropriate things and spread positivity instead of negativity. Um, so what should students do to help with this issue? Stand up, speak out, and um, I think that that's the number one factor is to be able to have that courage to, you know, and I say put a lion in your heart. I always think lions are the most courageous animals and I always think that, you know, we're going to need to have a lion in your heart today and you need to be courageous, but if students can you know embrace that courage and say you know what today's the day to make a difference and my friends being hurt and I'm going to say no don't bully and or you know what that's really not kind because we don't have to say it in a way that makes us uncool because that's a lot, a lot of us think that that you know if we say these things it's going to make us an outcast but if we just say you know what that's that's really not good to say or um, just being calm and polite about it and if you if you do that you'll be surprised at what it can do um, but just be prepared to make a difference and stand up because I promise it could potentially save a life what advice would you give to someone who is being bullied I would say that there's hope and there's going to be a brighter tomorrow 
and that whatever they say doesn't define you and you don't have to let someone tell you who you are or what you're worth because you're invaluable and you are very special. But I would also like to tell people who are being bullied that you do have people who can help and never be afraid to ask for help and uh, just be 100% knowing that you are amazing and that people have been where you are and I'm one of them and I always tell students too that I have public accounts all over social media um, it's at Miss America WV and they are more than welcome to follow me you know because maybe sometimes seeing someone else's journey can help um, is there anything else that you'd like to add about bullying or anything else that we've discussed? I think you guys did a wonderful job of covering it, and I just hope that everybody kind of takes it in stride and, you know, realizes that it is a really big issue and it really does hurt. But um, I'm proud of you guys for doing what you do. You do a great job, and thank you for having me today. So if you guys want to do my pledge with me, the whole school, I would love for you to do your pledge, but um, it's just as simple as, like, raising your right hand and just making a little vow to me, you know, yourself, your peers, all those who are around you, that you are going to make a difference. So, I have a line in my heart. I have a line in my heart. I will be courageous. I will be courageous. I will stand up. I will stand up. I will speak out. I will speak out. And I can make a difference. And I can make a difference. So, there you go. From that point on, you've made that little promise to me and all those around you, just by simply doing that, that you can make a difference and you can make a big impact. Um, thank you so much for coming out to Hedgesville today. We want to wish you luck with your bullying campaign and whatever else you do. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Thank you.